Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a multi select dropdown where the choice options are a list of texts and you can allow your users to create new text. In other words, create new options for them to choose from. Uh, now, there's two different ways of going about this depending on whether your original uh, list of text is static choice or if the list of text is a dynamic choice and it's pulling from the database. So first off, let me go to the plugin section of my editor here. We are working with this plugin, the multi-select dropdown. So this lets you create uh, like a tag selection type of thing. Okay, so I have two versions of this on my page here. The first one is set to uh, static choices choice styles, I, uh, yeah, choice styles are static choices and I have typed in uh, all of my choices here, um, just hard coding it in, I'm not pulling from the database. Each choice is on a separate line and for this example, I have three choices, red, blue, green. So if I wanted my users to be able to add other colors, uh, then I need to check this box here, enable users to type new text. Okay, so now I can type in yellow, purple, and they will still show up just like all of the other tags, even though those were not part of my original uh, list of choices provided by you know, the app. Uh, and you can see that now that I've added these two, when I you know, click into the input and see the full list of everything that was selected, those new texts also show up there. I can remove blue and you see that it deselects it. So the ones that are highlighted are selected. Okay, now the important thing to remember with this is that this option here is only available when your choices are a text, a list of texts. Okay, so if I were to change this to, well, let me go over to my other input actually, because this will show you. So this input is showing a list of interests, uh, which is a data type in my database, and the choice options are a text field within the interest data type, so the name of the interest. Okay, uh, here's my data type interest. I just have one simple text field with name, interest name. Uh, and if I go to the table for my interest records, I have three records and I have three different interests here, reading, cooking, hiking. Okay, and so that's what I see out here, hiding, cooking, hiking, cooking, reading. So the setup for this particular multi dropdown is that the dynamic, the, the choice style is dynamic choices because we're pulling from the database. The type of choices is text. Okay, so the choice source needs to be a list of text. My choice source can't simply be a search for interest. It has to go to the text field so that we end up with a list of text. So the search for interest returns a list of interest records but then when we navigate to the name field, we now have a list of text, which is compatible with this type. And because this is still a list of text, you can see that this option here, enable users to type new text is still available. Now, if I were to change this to interest, for example, you know, and I made my choice sources a list of interest, notice how that option went away. I can no longer type new text. I can still have the multi dropdown work in the same way where it displays uh, the names by changing the caption here. So the, the choice sources are pulling from my interest records and my caption is the name of each interest. But because the source is not a list of texts, I do not have that option to allow users to type anything new in there. Okay, so that's a very big difference. A lot of people get tripped up on that. So I'm just gonna undo so we can get back to our text list here. Okay, type of choice is text. Choice sources is search for interest name. And then the option caption is simply the current option because each option is that name text already. All right, so now uh, because your interests, you know, or in this example, because the interests are from the database, we would assume that you know, if a user is typing in a new interest, that means that we want to create a new interest record in the database. Uh, so the way to do that is to create a workflow when this input is changed. Okay, so I have one set up here and I'm going to recreate it so you can see me do it step by step. Uh, so the workflow event would be uh, under elements here an inputs value is changed, right? So I'm going to select my input and it's going to be my interest multi drop down input here. 
Okay, so when this is changed, then we're going to want to create a new thing. And we want to create a new interest. Now, we have a couple of conditions here and filters that we need to do because we only want to create a new interest record if the change they have made to the multi dropdown uh, is a brand new name and it's not something that already exists in the database. So this should only run in that, in that scenario. So I'm going to add a condition only when we're going to search for our interests and we're going to filter our interests, okay? So I'm gonna take the name, and as long as the name is in the multi dropdowns value, then we will know how many interests uh, we, we already have in the database, okay? So we're gonna count those up, okay? Now, if I have less of these interests than the number of text that I have selected here, then I know that there is one more uh, new one. Okay, so I'm going to do less than the multi drop downs values count. Okay, so we're going to search for interests. We're only going to count up the number of we're only going to count up the interest records where the name is in this in the selected it's not in the choices just in what I have selected here. So right now this would be two. Okay, out of the three that are in the database. But what we are searching for, the number of interests that are in the database that I have also selected. Okay, so if that number of records in the database is less than the number of items that are selected here, that means I have typed something in that's new, like concerts, right? So two in the database is less than three total here. In that case, you can ignore these error messages. I've been making changes, so I need to refresh to run it. But um, in that case, we are wanting to create that new record. Okay, so when that count is less than the drop downs count, it can get confusing. That's why I'm repeating it a lot. <laughs> okay, so our action here is to create a new interest, and we want to save the value of the new name that we've typed in to this record here. So how are we going to find the new name? We can't exactly say, uh, you know, this text because the multi dropdowns value is a list of texts. It's all three of these. So we have to isolate the new one. All right. So we're going to take the value and then we're going to filter it. And after we filter it, we're going to create a constraint here in a second. I'm going to create it in such a way that I isolate it down to one single text. Okay, so after the filter, I just want to grab the first item uh, so that I actually tell Bubble, um, you know, this, the, I'm only going to have one new name, so I'm going to take the first item in this list value so that uh, I for sure only enter one name in this field. Uh, you could also just leave it like that because if your constraint is um, strong enough and you, you, uh, you know, your scenario here makes it so that every time this runs, there will only ever be one new thing, then you will only have one text that shows up here. But I like to just kind of add that extra layer of uh, safety there with the first item. So our filter, what we want to say is take all of the interest names that are in the database and filter out the ones that we have selected from the database already. We only want to be left with the ones that are not in the database. So I'm going to add a constraint here and we're going to do a search for interests. No constraints there. I'm just going to click back on the filter option here to go back one window. Okay, search for interests names doesn't contain this text. This text meaning each individual selection from your multi drop down. So it's going to run this constraint on each of those and do that check. So search for interest name doesn't contain this text, then that's a value that we want to keep in this search. Anything else, if the name does contain the text, it's going to be filtered out, right? So again, we're just trying to narrow down to find the one value that's new. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is the one that I've been working with here. Let's mark it in green. I'm going to just delete my um, placeholder one there that I was using as a reference. So this is the one that we just built and let's give it a spin here. 
And while that's reloading, I'm just going to check on my database here. Okay, so these are the three that I have uh, in the database, reading, cooking, hiking. You can see those there. So let's say I type in concerts. Okay, you can see the loading bar working a little bit there. And if I click, you can see the fourth one is added. And if I refresh my database, then a new record has been created with concerts uh, listed as the name. And of course I can, you know, still select my other ones. And if we refresh the database here, there will be no new records created because those were already in there, right? So that condition prevented any blanks or duplicates from being created. But if the condition did pass, it would create the record only with the new name that was typed in. All right, so that's how it works. Um, again, you have it depends on what what your source of options are. You can either have your static choices um, like this, where you type them all in, make sure that you have that checkbox checked, or you can have things pulling in from your database so that the users see things dynamically uh, from the database and can add to it themselves. Again, make sure that this is checked. The important thing to remember is that your type of choices in either scenario. Uh, does need to be a list of texts, right? If you liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, comment below. Uh, we have many, many more tutorials just like this in our VIP membership. So if you are not already a member, you can check out the description below. There are links to learn more about that. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.